Hello, I'm Marissa. I am Eat This Not That social media director and we are about to go live with Tomi Amador, a member of our medical expert board here at Eat This Not That. Toby is an award-winning dietitian and Wall Street Journal best-selling cookbook author who believes healthy and wholesome can also be appetizing and delicious. She is the founder of Toby Amador Nutrition, where she provides nutrition and food safety consulting services for individuals, restaurants, and food brands. And today, we are so excited that Toby will be joining us to answer questions that you, our followers, have previously submitted all about getting back into the school groove for both kids and adults. Hi, Toby. How are you? How are you? I'm great. Uh, we're so happy to have you. Thank you for joining us. Of course. I, I love this hour. This is a fun hour. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, for those of you joining us, thank you for being here. You very likely have seen Toby on one of our live Q and A's before. They're always so packed with great info. Toby, we are going to be talking about getting back into the school groove. Um, I have so many great questions that our followers submitted. Is there anything you'd like to say to set the stage before I hop right in and read them out for you? I, I think we could dive in, but the only thing I have is always let's look everything positive food positive especially to children and to yourself so always remember that I absolutely love that okay the first question that we got is are there are any of the hot lunches served in school cafeterias healthy I don't want my kids eating pizza every day but I don't have time to pack their lunches either so um, if the school is participating in the school lunch program, which is governed by uh, the government, basically, so it has to like meet specific criteria to give a balanced meal. You may not 100% agree always, and I know the USDA school lunch program is updating with they're rolling out new changes based on par parents' feedback. Um, I know at least like from the New York perspective, pizza is one time a week uh, in like the public schools here. And so I know that because I can look at the schedule. I used to counsel people in the New York area. And so if it is, yes, you don't want pizza every day, but if you want like pizza once a week, but it explains to the child, like work on the menu. So if you know your cafeteria maybe has like a salad bar, try to complement that one slice instead of taking two or three slices, one slice of pizza, maybe there's a hot vegetable you could put on the side or some salad, a fruit or yogurt, like you just balance it out so the child isn't just eating pizza because yeah, you don't want them, you want them to have more food groups to help fill some of those nutrient gaps so they stay healthy and can grow properly and could do well in school. So look at the schedule, that's number one. Like they're usually, for every single school, they print it out and then sit with your child because they should be involved in the process to determine what should be eaten that day. And if it's really like the child doesn't like it or you know it's really beyond your scope then just that would be the day to bring in your own lunch okay perfect um next what are the best inexpensive healthy snacks i can buy in bulk to send my son to school with so there's a lot of the warehouse stores i'm always like i just had it now like one of my go-to snacks as an adult which kids love is popcorn because people don't realize it's a whole grain um, so it's certainly one, um, that I promote, just make sure it doesn't have like, look at the, you do want to still look at the calories even for children because you don't want like butter and saturated fat and like those heavy buttery ones, but there's so many on the market right now that you can, you know, definitely that would be one. Um, people count out dried fruits. Don't remember the hydrated. I would think if there's no water, it would be more concentrated in sugar, but it only means that the portion size is half of what's fresh because the sugar is removed. So that's why it's a smaller portion. So I know there's, um, there's prunes, there's my son loved dried apricot halves, um, raisins, like you're just, you're good old, like from the seventies and eighties, we had raisins, so like a good old box of raisins. Um, and there's mango, there's banana, there's so many fun flavors. And then if you want 
um, not just the warehouse stores, but you have places like Trader Joe's, which sell them at a good price, Target, Walmart, like a lot of these do have good prices on these more uh, expensive things. You can buy them in larger amounts and then divide them in like single use baggies or containers if they're reusable for the kids to just grab and go and put it out for the week. You can make a trail mix. If they're not allergic to nuts, you can make a nut or seed, sunflower seeds, pepitas, pumpkin seeds. Um, or if they're allergic to nuts, fine, then put like crunchy stuff, maybe a whole grain cereal that you like um, to be crunchy, some whole grain pretzels, even a couple of, uh, you could do chocolate chips. I don't like dark chocolate. Some kids may not. So do a semi or a milk, or just a little bit to give them like a little fun in their snack. You do you, but those are just all a lot of options. Awesome. Yeah. I love that dried, uh, dehydrated fruit tip. I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, okay, my kids have been eating well over the summer, but I'm worried the school year will have them sharing unhealthy processed food with friends again. Any advice? Okay, so let's talk about the word processed foods, ultra high processed foods. I just want to point out that the processing isn't the issue. It's the quality of the nutrition in that processed food because baby formula is actually an ultra processed food, but it's fantastic clearly for infants. Right. Protein Butters, ultra processed doesn't mean you should keep it out. It's how you balance these foods and the new, like tofu is an ultra processed food. What am I going to say? Don't eat tofu. No, it has nutrition quality. So before let's talk about empty calorie food. That's really and high sh added sugar like donuts and cookies. That's this type of stuff you want to really minimize. Notice I said minimize and not get rid of. This is not black and white. You teach the kids, if you're gonna say, nope, you can't have it at all, believe me, when they go to their friend's house, yeah, they're gonna eat more than you want them to. So learn how to balance, learn how to minimize. Okay, how can I, yeah, you want a cookie? Let's also have maybe a fruit with that, a yogurt, drinkable, a, a pouch with applesauce, something of that sort. Um, so let's not talk about processed and unprocessed, but high quality nutrient filled foods, because we want to get those kids the nutrition they really need. Perfect. I love that. Um, okay. The school year is such a busy time for all of us that I end up slacking for dinner and serving frozen meals or fast food. What similarly easy meals can I have on hand that aren't so unhealthy? Okay. I just want to go through a lot of the frozen meals have done remakes and if you go to the eat this not that site i've written on some and yes. there's a lot of options out there so you certainly can find articles on that even with fast food i've done tons and i know some of my colleagues have done tons of articles on the eat this not that site where it breaks down not favorite of the worst for you but like let's look at like if they want something let's look on the list and see where they fall so then maybe that's a better option they have a best they have the worst so look at those lists as a guideline um, but those frozen meals remember they still should be complemented with salads you don't want to do salads because you don't have time then get baby carrots or even like cherry tomatoes not much to do there just rinse it and serve it and that's it so make sure you complement the frozen meals it's still it's not that much food and they actually say you're supposed to complement it with like a salad a fruit for dessert a fruit salad whatever you want um to have a fully balanced meal so there's certainly tons of options of frozen meals fast food again plan out your meals places and and there are it says like the top dinner for fast food some of the articles are like panera has it that's i make sure to always go like my daughter goes to college nearby there's a Panera down the street from the hotel that I stay at purposely. So I know that's where I'm going to get my meals from if I need to. But I also know McDonald's has oatmeal. I also know Starbucks has options. I also, again, the site will have all these listed for you so you can be better equipped when you have to go do these types of meals. Yes, perfect. Um, okay, any suggestions for diet-friendly lunches I can make for myself that my kids will also enjoy? I'd rather not have to prep different meals every day before I go off to work or drop them off at school. So shameless plug, but those are all 10 of my books with my new one coming. Yeah. <laughs> so literally my cookbooks that I have, those recipes are simple, easy, that you can make for your family. Like if you're making them a lasagna, then you take a piece of lasagna for breakfast, for, for breakfast, you can, for lunch. Uh, my lasagna, a lot of times are with our lean meats or, and mushrooms usually are mixed in there. So I have, all my recipes are 
um, basically healthy that you can serve for you. The family you can find things. There, there are a couple, I have like probably close to a thousand recipes in my cookbook. So there's a ton of options and I really make it easily accessible. Those are the types of recipes you want to try to start incorporating into your family. Chili. The next day, what do I do with my chili? I can make it into a quesadilla if I'm working from home, or you could do it quickly and then warm it up in your office. Um, so there's so many different options. You don't have to eat separately from your children, and that's a big misconception. Um, yes, there's sometimes they don't like what you like all the time, but you can modify a little bit, like keep the, I don't know, blue cheese on the side if they don't like it, so you can do it the next day or jalapenos or whatever it is so get your recipes that's it go find a couple don't do a ton just start slowly incorporating some new things when they are a hit with everyone those are the ones that you can start um doing either make a double recipe and then take to work the next day love it that ch uh chili quesadilla sounds delicious I wish i had that for lunch uh, today there's that's why it's left over and it's like i have to eat it today and i think i'm gonna make that <laughs> Ellis. Okay. Uh, should my kids be taking supplements beyond children's multivitamins? So I, I would talk to your physician at this point in time because um, you have to be very careful. Some of the supplements you have to make sure, especially if they're herbal, um, if the kid is on medications, health condition, what else are they taking? There could be interactions. So speak to a registered dietitian who understands pediatrics and anything else, um, you know, they're on or the pediatrician or any other healthcare professional, um, it should really be contacted for that because you really need to look at the child's diet. Are they on any other medications? What's any other, like if the child is living with diabetes, that does play a role into, you know, some, some herbals actually lower the blood sugar for adults too. So I would be just very careful um, in terms of that. Talk to somebody, a health professional always before doing that. That makes sense. Okay. My family always gets sick when the kids are back at school and exposed to germs. Any advice for avoiding yep. this? work that immune system my daughter just went back to college everybody's sick it happens when kids get put together in the same environment and you were sorry it's okay your best bet is really a, a well-balanced healthy diet one of my cookbooks is the immunity um it's like uh, the immunity um cookbook so it has recipes that have um, different foods, no supplements, different foods with higher in vitamin C or in like various antioxidants or ginger, you know, so incorporating these, it's not a magic pill at all, but having a balanced diet and getting the variety of nutrition and nutrients you need from wholesome foods, that's really what's going to be your best bet for your immune system to work at its peak. I mean, you're going to get sick, you're going to get sick. At least then make sure to see a healthcare professional, do what you need to do to get better as quickly as possible. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and we've reached our last question. It is, what are the best quick, healthy breakfasts that my kids will actually eat before rushing off to school? I'm giving you my list because this is what we did. Um, you could do cereal, choose the sugar value that you wanted. But for me, if I wanted a little added sugar, that's where I'm putting it because it has a whole slew of vitamins and minerals. Number one source of fiber for breakfast, serve it with, uh, you could do cow's milk for 13 essential, uh, vitamins and minerals, or you can do it with soy milk. Those are the two that really have a bundle of nutrients. My kids liked it on the side, serve it with banana on top. I would make muffins in advance. So, and then I would grab and go with the muffins. Breakfast cookies are really fun, but they have nuts, seeds, or like some other healthy components, whole grain, um, uh, flour, wheat germ in there, or oats. Like I would build them up to be really healthy. Yogurt, you have drinkables, pair it with a banana or fruit that they like, grapes, strawberries, like anything that they like. Um, avocado toast is a huge in my family. And then we put everything, bagel sprinkling on that, an egg or even some cheese if you like. I This morning I had some hummus with an egg on it, if that's your thing. Like I do like hummus for breakfast. Um, that's another option. I do make pancakes sometimes in advance and then we grab and go. There's certain companies now that make nice whole grain waffle frozen, then put some yogurt on it. You know, it's okay to use the frozen foods and packaged foods, then complement it. Then put with a little bit of granola or chopped nuts and yogurt. It takes five minutes to make. 
really, really simple. So those are some like just really easy, simple things. Oh, smoothie, always smoothie. And I do like, my kids love the peanut butter powder or you could do a scoop of the, the whey if you wanna just make them feel fuller for longer to add some more protein to that smoothie. So don't forget about that. Oh, I love that. So many great options. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. It is always such a pleasure having you here. I know you mentioned your cookbooks. Please let us know first and foremost where everyone can find those and where else we can maybe find and follow you online. Sure. So my latest November, this is on pre-order health shots. So if you're worried about immunity, that one will get you in like all kinds of things you can take these shots from. Amazon has everything. All my That's my number 11. So Amazon has all my cookbooks and then uh, Toby Amador, just like my name says for Instagram, nutrition.com. Um, and you have my Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whichever, so. Yes, fantastic. Thank you so much again, Toby. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. If you did tune in late or you missed something that you want to return to, this live is going to live on Eat This, Not That's Instagram page right after we sign off. So check it out from the beginning. It was wonderful as always. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. Yes, you too. Thanks again.